All right, today I'm gonna to be working on this box. So my mom does a lot of painting and uh, she wanted something to keep her paints and her brushes and something, you know, something to keep everything in that would be nice and cool and artistic. So I found this toolbox at a swap meet. I paid five bucks for it. And there's a lot of personality going on in this thing you know it's it's beat up and rusty and dirty and you know the paint's all goofy and stuff but what I wanted to do with it is clean everything up and take uh, some steel wool and kind of exaggerate the blemishes on the box so like here along the handle along these edges this face all that I wanted to kind of make it burst out a little bit give it more personality instead of trying to sand it down and paint it and make it look nice I want to basically go around and make it look dingy and dirty but focus on that and make it look cool uh, first I'm going to take some some cleaning wipes and just kind of knock all the dirt and the grime off of it you know so like things like this area here you know it's it's got stuff that's baked on there from years and years you know of sitting in a barn or a garage or something and you know just knocking that stuff off is is going to help out get it really cool looking so I have some like quad zero steel wool here and what I'm talking about is just kind of going over it like this knocking the rest of that dirty dingy stuff off of there so see it's taking it it's taking it and cleaning up the stuff that the wipes aren't getting so I'm Normally, like on a car or something, you do this, you want to power wash it first, but this, I want the dirt to get in there and do its thing too. If it scratches it up, good. That's, that's what I'm looking for. So see, that's cleaned that up quite a bit just by doing that. I'll wipe it down again. We'll see that compared to the top part you know, that's that's gonna look really cool so let me grab another piece of uh, steel wool and I will go over it a little bit more This is a little bit more of a coarse piece. Some of that dripping looking stuff, you know, I want to take that off of there. It's like I don't want it to be dirty, but I want to accelerate the wear, if that makes sense. And I want it to be smooth. I don't want any rough parts on it. See, this is what I'm looking for right there. When it bucks all that paint off there and cleans it up at the same time. So basically any part that looks like it's got some stuff going on, I'm not going to be afraid to touch any of that stuff. I'm going to actually use it to my benefit and get this squared away how I want it to. And this is already looking pretty cool. With the coarser stuff, you know, it's going to leave some scratch marks. So what you want to do is you want to take your quad zero, your fine stuff, and go back over that area and get the scratches away. So it looks like a natural wear. See, 
See, that's come out really cool. I'm going to do that through the whole box. All the, the blemishes that were there are now breaking through to the original color of the box. I'm assuming that this was like an old red craftsman box that you see you know, every day uh, and they painted it white. Well this white has had so much you know dirt and wear and grease on it that it's turned like an antique white and I'm going to use that to my benefit because I want it to look like it's wearing through and then after I get it all done all the little scratches and the dents and the dings and stuff once I go through it with my steel wool <clears throat> and then clean it all up I'm going to do a mixture of linseed oil and mineral spirits and then set it out in the sun and let it bake on there and it's going to turn into this awesome matte finish and uh, this, thing will, this thing will look awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get busy doing my thing on this and uh, I'll stop the tape and, and, and show you what I've got going on before I do the linseed oil treatment and then we'll come back and take a peek at it after that. So give me a second and I'll, I'll finish up what I'm doing here and uh, I'll get back. So you can see I've used a little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of steel wool, and cleaning as I go. It's really bringing out the personality that I want. I don't necessarily want it to go all the way through, but the different shades of red coming through the white or the red into the metal itself, it's really come along. It's smooth every time that I use the sandpaper or the steel wool. It knocks that roughness down that I was feeling before and now it feels smooth with the characteristics and the personality that I want on the uh, outside so when I do the linseed oil treatment that'll really bring it out as like a matte finish and really make these pop and uh, you'll see when I get to that point.
It's looking good so far. I don't know if you can see this right here, but you can see fingerprints in the paint from when somebody touched it before it was dry all the way. That's kind of cool. And this is a ton of elbow grease. I mean, you just got to sit here and take your time and go through everything. I mean, every little bit of surface area on this thing needs to be touched. Everything that feels rough needs to feel smooth for the uh, linseed oil treatment to make it look more of like a clear coat. And, you know, everything that you see will look different after the treatment. I, I mean, I guess everything that you touch, you'll be able to see. So everything that you touch to the field, you'll be able to see after the linseed oil treatment. So you want to be able to get that as smooth as possible. keep in mind is you want to wear gloves when you're doing this you know I've got construction hands I've been doing construction for 20 years now so my hands are calloused over and they're they're pretty rough um, so I don't mind using the steel wool or the sandpaper to uh, do this um, it doesn't really affect me but uh, you know to keep metal slippers and stuff out of your fingers and keep your hands from getting rubbed really raw uh, you might want to use just some work gloves you know gardening gloves or something like that to do this uh, you know that may not be you you might be in the same situation as me but you know just a heads up and tip you know if you if you do end up wanting to take that advice <laughs> Thank you. 
I think I just had a really cool idea for the bottom since it's you know pretty well worn and uh, not much there to really make you know artistic I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tape off the edges and then you know right probably along the imaginary line between the flat surface and the radius here on the bottom on both sides and I think I'm going to spray this with truck bed liner. So that'll make it grippy and, uh, and you know, textured. And, uh, it, and I just think it'd be a good idea. I think it just, it'd look kind of cool. So I think we're going to go with that. And pretty much done here. All I'm going to have to do is spray the inside. Just clean it up really well and spray the inside with white and spray the tray with white and then do the linseed oil on this and let it sit out in the sun for a little bit. Um, I do have to do the sides real quick. That's the last little bit. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with the handle yet. I'm not sure if I'm gonna continue to do the cleanup on the handle and uh, linseed that, or if I should do like grip tape or the, uh, the bed liner on the handle. So I guess we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. But so far looking great. Went ahead and cleaned this up a little bit ahead of time just to knock all the dirt and the crap off of it. Still a little wet. Uh, one thing that I wanted to show you is like the handle here is a little bent. And some of these walls inside here, these little partitions, they're a little bent. Um, you don't need to do anything crazy to get those things back in order. Uh, you know, I'm just going to pull it up a little bit. Get that pretty close to where it needs to be. Same within here. You know, these, I'm just gonna pull them back by hand. It's really thin metal. Doesn't need to be perfect. I want it to have that beat up personality, but I want it to be functional. So, you know, you can see, you know, that was pretty well goofed up. And, you know, the handle's pretty well straight now. So I'm gonna take this down to the basement and paint this in primer and white. Um, I'm gonna use VHT engine primer and some Duplicolor wheel paint, white. Just stuff I had in my garage. And for the bottom. stuff first off you want to wear a mask I can't find mine so I'm just holding my breath you want to try to spray your first coat is a dust coat so doing a little bit at first is good and then doing a little bit on the next one you're gonna cover a little bit more and then once you know wait a couple minutes in between coats you know and get a you know a, a good a flashing is what it's called so when I get the coverage in there over a couple of coats, you know, I don't have any drips or anything like that or any runs. You know, you want to be very, very patient with this. And I want to try to get every little detail in there. And I'm going to put a couple coats of uh, primer on there because I want it to build up and, and be protected, you know. So I'll do a couple coats of this and then I'll do a couple coats of the white and uh, make sure that, that it, it gets good coverage and good color. Um, another thing too is your primer, if you use like a gray primer or a black primer or a white primer depending on whatever color you're spraying, that will, um, that will change the, the tint of your color. So you get like, uh, say if you're using like a red and you use a gray primer, you're going to get 
more of a bright red, but if you use a black primer, you're gonna get more of like a, a darker red. You, know, you see what I'm saying there? So uh, this part right here is, is pretty important, you know, um, as far as the quality of the job. You know, you don't wanna have runs you don't want to be fast and get it, try to get it done. You know, if you if you've never painted before, you really want to follow a few simple steps. You want to make sure that you're tedious and patient on your coats. So you want to do a small light dusting on your first coat. Your second coat, you want to do the same scenario, a light dusting, but a little slower on your passes. You know, on your third coat, you want to do a little bit heavier. You know, and and depending on how many coats you want, how, how thick you want the primer to be, you know, just kind of follow that, that same steps, those same couple steps, you know, and, and you'll have a very nice piece without runs. Um, runs are terrible. You'll have to completely sand everything down if you get a run, you know, and if you just sand the run down and you paint back over, it's going to look you know, very uneven, especially if that's like the outside of whatever you're painting. You know, this is just the tray on the inside, so it's it's not really that crazy, you know, important, but I still like to try to make it look really good. You know, and this is, it's pretty, it's pretty dry down here and warm, so this is going to dry up really, really quick. Um, another thing too is, you know, right where you're, right where you're hanging your, your piece, that's going to have a line in it where you know the coverage didn't get in there because of your of your uh, your hanger. So you're gonna have to once it's all dry, you're gonna have to spot that in, um, and that'll you know that'll take care of everything. There's a few little pieces in here, like little scratches and stuff that I can see, and I'm gonna try to cover as much as I can with the primer. You know, it's a uh, for you know, this is for engine block, so it's got a little bit of a temperature thing to it. It'll work on anything, you know. Uh, it depends on, you know, what kind of primer you have. If you've got a lot of uh, uh, little sanding scratches and stuff and you want a high build, find yourself a high build primer, and that's going to that's gonna build it up with every coat. So you kind of fill those scratches in and be able to sand it down, you know, with like wet sandpaper, like 600 grit, you know, wet sandpaper and get it all nice and smooth and clean it up and then hit it with paint and it's gonna look great. You know, painting's an art. You know, you gotta really pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, you know, get no drips. Make sure that your, your sanding's done correctly because if you can feel it, you're gonna see it. That's, that's a big rule. You know, so I want this to look a little bit more distressed so I'm not too worried about the sanding. I want it to match the box but I do want it to have good color and I do want it to have a good smooth texture to it other than the small areas that I've laid out that I didn't sand, you know, to have that weird texture, that worn texture. So it's kind of like fake patina. Just like that right there, like I did one pass and then I did a second pass and there's a wet line that you'll see. So that you let that wet line go in and then you cover that wet line by 50%. That, that kind of guarantees that you're gonna have good coverage on your paint. <laughs>